how do i become a leader how do i ensure everyone listens to me and only me main hi main yatra tatra sarvatra agar main hi main hu to kya main leader hu a leader is one who is followed by people he is the one who is looked upon by people he is the one who has the answers to those questions which not just have been asked but also those which are not asked questions which otherwise would never crop up in anyone's mind will crop up in his mind as he is the one with a long range eyesight which gives him the ability to view those minute details that no one else can view this can be understood by a simple analogy of a driver of a car the driver is able to see those nuances in traffic and on the road which are not seen by the co-driver or the passengers in the car the success and the safety of the journey of all the people in the car depends upon the control and the decision making of the driver you can imagine what would happen if the driver starts listening to all the suggestions of the co-driver or the passengers and then act upon in the 1980s aids arrived on the world stage as a new frightening disease with no cure it was rampaging through communities and countries and people believed that you could catch this only from touching someone who had even been sitting on the same toilet seat sufferers were shunned and up to 50% of the people polled in the us believed that those with aids should be quarantined on the 19th april 1987 princess diana one of the most famous people in the world opened the first unit in the uk dedicated to treating patients with hiv and aids during her visit she shook hands with the patient without wearing gloves and this changed people's perception about the disease forever she gives us an example of a quality of leadership which is all about making the first move let me also tell you another quick story rusi modi the then chairman of tata steel was holding a weekly meeting with the tata steel staff at a football ground in jamshedpur a worker took up a niggling issue and said the quality and the hygiene of the toilets for the workers was very bad whereas he pointed out that the cleanliness and the hygiene of the executive toilets are very good rusi asked one of his top executives how much time he needs to set this right the executive asked for a month to set it right whereas rusi said i would rather do this in a day just send me a carpenter the next day when the carpenter came he ordered the sign boards to be swapped the sign board on the worker solo was changed to executives and the executives was changed to workers rusi then gave instructions to interchange these sign boards every fortnight the quality of both the toilets became at par in 3 days time the solution that was immediate and lasting for both debriefing the story as a leader it is your job to listen to the problem patiently but to implement the solution quickly always keep finding new ways to solve the problem quickly the moment you get this mindset your path is transformed from a normal leadership to a great leadership like rusi modi to conclude whenever we have uttered the word leader there has always been a larger than life image of a hero who is a knight in shining armor who is always there to defend the town against the rival forces with that strong sword arm the reality is that a person who decides with determination clarity and a mind can be a leader in any situation in his life after all to lead others we must first learn to lead ourselves towards the cause to understand this further let us listen to our speaker for the day stay tuned and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon for further notifications thank you every person in the world aspires to be a great leader because as all of us grow up in different parts of the world different parts of the country we always look at people who inspire us and feel that one day i should be like them i mean when you think of leaders think of names like mahatma gandhi nelson mandela think of names like sachin tendulkar in the sports sphere amitabh bachchan in 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 the arts and so many others in corporate of course there is no end to it our own indra noe from india or of course people like uh, jack welch of g but what is common to all these people is the ability to inspire because it's all very well to be an outstanding ceo or a great manager which really means that you are very competent but the difference in a leader is that they're able to inspire common people to do uncommonly great achievements and i think that is what we all need to develop as we go along my own belief is that 
Nothing can actually train you to become a leader because you can be trained in accounting or marketing or sales or general management, but leadership comes from within. In my own career, for instance, I mean, I started off like many of you, did my management somewhere, and then started off in manufacturing, information technology, etc. And very slowly, over a period of experimenting with various job roles, right from operations to technology, and eventually started my own company as an entrepreneur and looked at being in sales and realized that what was my core capability was to bring the best out of people. So initially started in a company with hardly 20 employees, then moved on to run the division of a company which had close to 200 employees, then ran two companies, Aptech and Zensar. And Zensar when I left had 8,300 employees. And I think our success in leadership, and not just me, but the generation of leaders that we developed, was to ensure that each one could demonstrate three values of leadership. The first was, of course, developing people, because if you don't take your team along, it never really succeeds to build a large organization. The second was giving feedbacks, because in India, I think many of us grew up in very hierarchical environments. And we're always worried that if you are concerned about something, if something is upsetting us, we find it difficult to articulate that. But great leaders not only are comfortable giving feedback, both positive and negative feedback, but also are willing to do it very often for as much time as a person needs to become better themselves. And the third, which I think is very important, is connectedness. Now, what is connectedness? A lot of us seem to believe that this whole concept of work-life balance means that you just put your head down and work, 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 maybe five days a week, and then you party and have fun for two days during the weekend. In reality, leaders who are successful at what they do are people who enjoy work. So connectedness would really mean that irrespective of whether it's Monday morning at 9 a.m. or it's Saturday evening when you're really having a drink with the team, you feel connected with people all the time. So the minute you're able to do that, the minute you're saying that, look, I'm here to develop the team, you're able to say that, look, I will give you feedback, I will tell you what you're doing right, what you could be doing better, and I feel connected, which means I take ownership for your success, and your success will determine my success, then I'm on the way to becoming a great leader, and a leader can also develop other leaders. I remember when we were in Zensar, one of our signature activities in leadership used to be building what we called vision communities. Now, what's a vision community? And what has a leader got to do with it? Vision communities, as the name implies, is a collective vision seen by an organization. And then a whole community of people, right from the junior most trainee to maybe the senior most vice presidents, participating in the realization of that vision. So when we created vision communities, the idea was that in every aspect, we should be among the top one or two or three in the industry, whether it was in our sales growth, whether it was in the quality of products and services, the satisfaction and the delight we gave to customers, and probably the most important, the enjoyment or the affinity that every employee felt with the organization. So vision communities would actually go out and think of very innovative ideas to make various changes happen, various new initiatives happen, and we really created something which was magical. And I still remember, I mean, I was actually talking in Harvard Business School about vision communities, and they finally wrote a very successful case study around that. And the question that we used to keep getting asked is, okay, you've built a generation of great leaders. What is that one attribute that you would say that they demonstrate much better than leaders in other organizations, or much better than people who are not such good leaders? And I used to always say, that they demonstrate a quality which I call love and inclusion. A vision community is nothing but inclusion. It includes everybody, irrespective of hierarchy, irrespective of role in the organization, into a process of organization growth. And love is obviously a letter, a word that we all know, but it really means a genuine caring, a genuine liking for each other, beyond hierarchies, beyond designations, and how do we make this happen? So I would really say, that it is wonderful to be a leader. And in my current role, where we are actually mentoring and investing in multiple companies around the country in different parts of the world, 
we are finding many young people who take to entrepreneurship very early in their careers, want to set up their own companies, become what is called a unicorn or a billion dollar value. But all these are kind of imbued or they have that capability to make great change happen in the world. So when you read about Mahatma Gandhi and you hear about his wonderful sayings about putting the customer first, being the change we want to be, finding purpose and then the means will follow, you must realize that all this is about seeing a different vision of the world. Today, hopefully, our Prime Minister and members of the Cabinet are seeing a vision for India, which is the $5 trillion Indian economy, people really working in unison and harmony, and a country which is really going forward positively to take its place in the world. But I think that is what leaders will do. Leaders will inspire all of us, like John F. Kennedy did in America, to ask that basic question saying, what can we do for the organization? Or what can we do for the country? And not just keep on cribbing and being negative and saying, oh, nothing is happening and I have to grow. Don't forget, a leader will take responsibility for actions and outcomes into her own hands. And she will ensure that everybody comes along with them. And finally, I'd like to say that we all have this wrong notion that a leader's task is to build followers and let the followers have a lighthouse or a beacon of leadership. My own belief is a leader's task is to create more leaders. So if some of you who are listening to this talk and are part of this wonderful course for Bitcoin are able to get inspired and say that, look, maybe not today, maybe five years from now, maybe 20 years from now, I will be talked about as one of the great leaders of my generation. I think you would have accomplished something that not only you, but future generations will be proud of. So all the very best on your journey to leadership and we are all there to support you. I think the Bitcoin Institute of Management is doing pioneering work because they are bringing together the thoughts of people who have already accomplished something in life with outstanding members of the faculty who are bringing new ideas to, for students to think about. And leadership itself is an area which every management school aspires to teach in many formats. I had the privilege of spending time at Harvard Business School where we had some outstanding professors of leadership. My own favorite was a gentleman called David Garvin, whose whole idea of leadership in action inspired so many of us to build companies, to be successful in our own lives. And I think the opportunity for Bitcoin is to build this generation of leaders for the country. As all of us know, India is at a crossroads. In the last three years, the economic growth has been quite sad, initially because of sluggishness of the economy, and of course, for the last year and a half and more, thanks to the pandemic, which has been really, really devastating for India. But as we finish the second wave, hopefully avoid a very complicated third wave of COVID, we will see signs of life in terms of various economic sectors really standing up and growing. And we are seeing that. We are seeing that in financial services. We are seeing that in manufacturing. But what it will need is a new generation of leaders. And I, my belief is that institutions like Midcon can enable this new generation of leaders to emerge. Because as you think about India, we should be thinking about not three or four or five great companies, but we probably need about maybe 5,000 outstanding large companies and maybe at least 5 million smaller companies and many, many, many young people taken to entrepreneurship. So it's that capability which will need millions of leaders that has to be served by great institutions like Midcon. So I think if Midcon can provide the leadership training, the leadership experience, projects and collaborations with industry, with other academic institutions in India and abroad, to really take the leadership mantra forward, I think we will serve the needs of the student community, the needs of academia, and of course, the needs of the country and the world that much better. So all the best to Midcon. I think you're embarking on a great mission and I'm sure every thinking individual in India and the world will align with you and make you successful.